Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section what we're going to do is begin to use the Kirchhoff Current Law and the Kirchhoff Voltage Law together as a set of tools to start to solve some real circuits. And so what we're going to do is embark on this journey where we start with some sort of more basic circuits and then work our way up in complexity and I think quickly you'll see that the KCL plus the KVL together can, can solve tons of different kinds of circuit problems. So the, the challenge is knowing how to apply those things and knowing you know, when to use one versus when to use the other and how to get what you want out of those equations. So that's what we're going to do here. Here's the first problem we have. It's relatively simple because all of these resistors are what we say to be in series and we're going to talk a lot more about series resistors later but for now just know that being in series just means that these resistors are you know one after another daisy chain so to speak now this is a typical problem like you might see in a textbook we have a 24 volt source connected to three resistors that are in series like this and this resistor is 2 ohms, this resistor is 5 ohms, and this resistor is 1 ohm, so that's all given to you. And then labeled in the drawing, we're told that this voltage across this guy is what we call V sub 2. The reason we call it V sub 2 is because this is 2 ohms, so it kind of helps you keep track of what voltage you're talking about. So this is V sub 2. This is V sub 5, right, because it's across the 5 ohm resistor. And this is V sub 1, and it's across the 1 ohm resistor. We're also given that the current flowing through this resistor here is I sub 5. So it looks like a complicated drawing. The reason I'm doing it for you this way is to kind of show you when you turn your page to a test or to a problem in a book, you're going to see a circuit, and you're going to see lots of labels everywhere, and you need to get over your fear of them if you have a fear of them now. You need to kind of get over the fact that you're looking at a bunch of labels and start to roll up your sleeves and solve them. So here's, here's what you do. Bam, this is your first question. You have these three voltages here. You know the current going through here. Nothing's really given to you other than the value of the resistors and the, um, the voltage source here. And what we're asked to find in this problem here is what we want to find. So I'll just write it here. Find. We want to find the value of I sub 5. We want to know the value of V1. We want to know the value of V2. We want to know the value of V5. And then on top of all of that, we want to know the power uh, delivered and the power absorbed. In other words, we want to know how much power is being delivered by the source, and we want to know how much power is being absorbed by all these resistors, and we've already learned from previous problems that they have to be equal and opposite. So if we find out that 10 watts of power is being delivered by the source, then when we calculate the power absorbed by everything else, it has to be equal to 10 watts when you add it all together. We've already talked about that. So this is what your a typical problem. You'd be giving a, given a drawing, some labeling, and you have to find all this stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, looks like they erased part of my resistor. I'm going to tell you right now, there are many, many different ways to solve a problem. And you think back to algebra, there's a ton of ways you can solve any given equation, right? And you have latitude to do that. You can multiply both sides of the equation by a number. You can divide both sides of the equation by a number. You can square both sides. You can take the square root of both sides. You can do all kinds of crazy tricks. The only goal that you have is to get down to solving that equation. And you're given the tools, which is how to manipulate the left and the right hand side. And so once you kind of get over your fear of algebra and your first thoughts of that it's hard, you understand those tools and you use them in whatever means you need to to get to the answer. Circuit analysis is the same way. What you're going to find is that all problems are different. Even if the circuits look the same, if you're given different pieces of information, it's going to change how you attack the problem. So in the beginning here, don't be too surprised if you 